Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Dubai, season one, episode seven. And this episode was the definition of multiple things can be true at the same time. But let me not jump ahead. Let's just jump right on into it because we don't have a minute to spare. So we open up this episode with Ayan and her son Taj, and they're at a designer fitting because they're gonna be walking in the show in the next few days. Ayan is excited, she's trying on dresses, and then we see her son trying on all these outfits as well. And we learn that Taj has been modeling since he was a kid. I love how Ayan is a fun parent. You can see that her and her son really have a great relationship. They're super close and it's always fun to watch. Now we jump to the next scene with Caroline and Sergio. And this is the big meetup between both parents. Caroline's a bit nervous because her parents are stuffy, snobby, and dry. And Sergio's parents are very warm, loving, and affectionate. So before the parents get there, Caroline's joking around with Sergio about how her dad knows about how his dad was trying to pay him off to not marry her. So now we see Caroline's parents join them. And did anybody notice how Caroline's mom went to hug Sergio, but she didn't hug Caroline? I was thinking, why wouldn't you want to hug your daughter? I did not like when Caroline's mom asked Sergio if his parents know how to speak English well. I was like, girl, what? Maybe she didn't mean any harm, but I was definitely side-eyeing her. Like, girl, what does that mean? So now Sergio's parents arrive, and you can tell they're very fun, very sweet, very warm. And it was so cute because Sergio's dad was like, I mean, the hotel is gorgeous. It reminds me a lot of a hotel we stayed at in Vegas. So you could see that Caroline's parents didn't know what he was talking about. So they were just kind of sitting there like, uh-huh, yeah. So it's kind of awkward, kind of tense. Nobody really knows what to say. You have Caroline's mom trying to compliment Sergio's mom about how she speaks good English. And Sergio's mom's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I was like, awkward. <laughs> Then Sergio's dad is asking Sergio if he's been teaching Caroline Spanish. Caroline's like, no. And then he starts asking Caroline if she's ready to be married again. So she says that she's ready. And now the whole topic about Sergio's father trying to pay off Sergio to not marry her comes up. And Sergio's father says, oh my gosh, I was on the internet and I saw that rumor come up and I was like, that's not really what happened. He's joking around and at the end of the day, he says, look, I love my son. As long as he's happy, then I'm happy. So this meetup ends up being a big success. They all toast to two families becoming one. I did think it was really funny how Caroline said, I'm 18 years older than Sergio and only 10 years younger than his dad. <laughs> And then Caroline adding that maybe Sergio's second wife will be younger. I was like, you can just see it already that Caroline really doesn't have any plans on this marriage lasting for forever. I think she sees this as an ego boost and just, you know, it's going to run its course eventually and it was fun while it lasted. But I really don't think that Caroline believes that this union is going to last and stand the test of time. Now we flip to the next scene with Lisa at home. She's outside with her boys and it is so cute. Her boys love having the goat that Ayan gave them as a pet and they've named her Miss Goat. So Lisa's like, at this rate, we're gonna keep the goat because if we give her away, the boys are gonna have a fit. <laughs> so while the boys are playing with the goat, we now see Lisa on FaceTime with Caroline Brooks. So Caroline says, girl, do you have a few minutes? Because last night was a night. I had Sarah over with my two friends from Boston. And baby, when I tell you that Sarah tried me. So Lisa says, girl, what happened? So Brooke says that Sarah pretty much told her that she needs to be more affectionate to her son. So Lisa says, oh my gosh, no, she didn't say that. Caroline Brooks says, yes, she did. She was out of line. Don't you ever tell me how to raise my kid. 
So now Brooks goes on to say that Sarah critiquing her on her parenting skills is an attack to her Caribbean Afro-Latina upbringing. Now, I remember that shade that Lisa threw some episodes back where she said, every single time you see Brooks, she's a different nationality. One day she's Jamaican, then the next day she's Trinidadian, then the next day she's Afro-Latina. Like, she can't pick what she wants to be. <laughs> so now you have Lisa agreeing that Sarah does give unsolicited advice and how Sarah sort of acts very self-righteous and she talks like she's a walking IG meme. And I could not stop laughing because I said, yeah, that is true. <laughs> so here's how I feel about this. I'm on Sarah's side. I think that Caroline Brooks is overly sensitive because she was really mad at them critiquing her about wanting to send her 10-year-old son to boarding school. And I think because she didn't hear what she wanted to hear about that, that's what really fueled her anger. Also, before Sarah gave that critique about Caroline Brooks being more affectionate to her son, she did say, Caroline, may I say something? I don't want to be out of line. And Caroline said, sure, babe, you're not out of line at all. And then she said, you know, I think you could be a little bit closer to your son. And that was it. Now, I'm not a parent as of yet, but I can't imagine that if a friend or a family member had some genuine advice or they had an opinion, I want to say that I wouldn't be upset and flip out like that. I don't know. I just think that if you ask for advice, you can't be mad when somebody gives it to you. I could see if Sarah pulled an Erica Jane, then you go off. But I didn't think that Sarah said anything crazy that warranted all that. But at the same time, Sarah is very preachy and very self-righteous. But I don't think it comes from a bad place. I think that, you know, she just thinks that she knows best. And we all know people like that. But like I told you guys in these last few recaps, that's why... You should just keep your mouth shut and not give any advice, no matter if somebody asks for it or not, because people always seem to get angry when you do give your two cents. Like I've said, all I have for you are restaurant recommendations and how to spend some money. Don't ask me for any life advice because I don't have the time or the patience for you to get mad at me when I share my thoughts and opinions, okay? <laughs> now, I was on the floor because Lisa was like, isn't Sarah a doctor? And Caroline Brooks said, a doctor of what? Where did she get her degree at? Then Brooks goes on to say that she will never take advice from a woman who got an honorary doctorate degree from a women's empowerment group. I said, no, she didn't. <laughs> So Caroline Brooks goes on to say that everybody has faults. And I say, yeah, girl, including you, because the way you were screaming at your friend like that was not cool at all. And he should have cursed you out for that because that was not right. So she says that Sarah's fault is that she's always giving advice where it's not needed and how she doesn't know what she's going to do when she sees Sarah at Caroline Stanberry's engagement party. So now we flip to the next scene with Nina at home and she goes on her patio to FaceTime Sarah. Now, a quick side note, Nina's penthouse is stunning, but that view she has of the city is everything. I said, I would never leave my house. Did y'all see that view? Just gorgeous. Nina, again, if you and your husband have any single friends who like black women, please let me know. I will be in Dubai in a heartbeat. <laughs> Let me know, Nina, and then I'll be the seventh housewife on the cast. <laughs> Let Caroline Brooks know I don't play with all that yelling either, so if me and her were to get into it, she would have to calm it all the way down. But I digress. So Nina starts off the conversation with Sarah by saying, Caroline Brooks called me earlier. She told me everything that happened. She is really upset with you because she feels like you are questioning her parenting. 
So Nina says, I understand because as a mom, nobody wants to feel like they're being judged. So Sarah says, let's set the record straight. She was not fighting with me. She was sitting up there fighting with her friends from Boston. They were yelling at each other. Then Sarah says, I don't know why she's mad at me. I was not critiquing her parenting at all. All I said was be better and break generational cycles. Then she goes on to say that she would never tell a mom that she wasn't a good mom ever. And she's just confused as to how Caroline Brooks took that from their conversation. I really like the friendship that Sarah and Nina have. You can tell it's genuine. They really do have each other's backs. And, you know, like I said, I don't think that what Sarah said was just so awful or so cruel. She wasn't saying that Caroline Brooks is not a good mom. She was just saying, I don't think boarding school is a good idea and to be a bit softer with your kid. That's all she said. I think that while Caroline is allowed to feel how she feels, I do think that her reaction was a bit overboard. So now we get to the next scene. It is the night of Caroline Stanberry and Sergio's engagement party, and their party's going to be in the desert. So we see Caroline, Sergio, and Caroline's kids all getting ready. And while Caroline's getting her makeup done, she is really on edge because her photographer has gotten COVID, the party planner has gotten COVID, a lot of guests are now not coming because they have COVID, and she's stressed out. So while she's telling her makeup artist and hairstylist about what's going on, her phone starts going off, and the whole cast is in this group chat. So baby, she starts reading the text that Sarah is sending to Caroline Brooks. And when I tell you, Miss Sarah went off, okay? She was letting Caroline have it. <laughs> I said, now Sarah, you should have picked up that phone and called Caroline Brooks. I don't like when people try to confront you via text message. Say what you have to say with your chest, face to face. I need to hear your voice because anybody can get big and bold behind a keyboard, okay? I don't like that. And then to try to embarrass somebody in a group chat at that, I'd be super annoyed. So Caroline Stanberry's like, oh my gosh, this is a hot mess because anytime somebody critiques your parenting skills, things always go left. So now Caroline's putting her dress on and we see her in this gorgeous diamond necklace that was $700,000. And honey, when I tell you, that necklace was everything. Now I wanna know, were they loaning that to Caroline or did she actually purchase it? Somebody let me know down in the comments, but there's a part of me that feels like she was loaning it for that night. Now, mind you, the dress code for Caroline and Sergio's engagement party, she wants all the guests to wear white. So just keep that in mind, okay? So now we see Nina and her husband on their way to the party. And Nina is very emotional because her father has COVID and things seem to be getting worse. So she's already on edge and that's understandable. Anytime a loved one, especially a parent is sick and they're in the hospital, there's definitely that feeling of uneasiness. You feel kind of off, you don't feel like yourself. But I loved how her husband was so comforting, like, babe, it's gonna be okay, like, have a good time. And then we learned that Nina's husband was in the hospital too. He had gotten COVID and Nina said that he had to relearn how to walk because he had lost feeling in his legs. I was like, oh my gosh. But thank God he's okay. I mean, you would never even know that something like that even happened to him. So now we head on over to the desert. All the guests are arriving. Did you guys catch how Caroline Stanberry's ex-sister-in-law was there as well? I was like, oh wow. Who knew that her and her former in-laws were still tight. <laughs> so mind you, as the guests start trickling in, Caroline Stanberry and Sergio are arriving and Caroline spots Ayan. She's really pissed because although the dress code was everybody wear white, she feels like Ayan has overdone it because Ayan had a train, gloves, and she was wearing lace. So Caroline and Sergio finally arrive to their own party and Caroline addresses Ayan and she's like, really Ayan, did you dress up as me? 
I mean, you have the blonde wig, you have the train, you have a veil, you have lace, you have gloves. Like, you look more like the bride than I do. So Ayan says, look like you. Like, girl, what? I am a gorgeous black woman. You could never. <laughs> I said, I know that's right. Now, Ayan says that Caroline's mad because Caroline's dress is from Sheen and her dress is not. Now, we see that Caroline Stanberry's dress is actually $12,000. Let me start off by saying that Ayan definitely ate Caroline Stanberry up. Well, she does that all the time. Let's be clear about that. That doesn't take much doing, okay? Ayan definitely comes from drip or drown. It's better to be overdressed than underdressed. And I'm going to always do the most and show out. And I hear you. I understand it. I get it. Because my parents always told me that when I step out the house to always look my best. I'm going to always do a heel. Okay, the face is always going to be beat. Hair is always going to be laid. You get what I'm saying? So I definitely understand where Ayan is coming from to, hey, it's really not my fault if you didn't bring it. I get it. But there is a thing called trying too hard. And Ayan definitely fell in that category for me. I feel like the dress was gorgeous. I was here for it. But her adding the train and the gloves, that was a bit much. Chanel would have still cleared even without the veil, the train, and the gloves. Because the dress could stand by itself. I love to see the girls show up and show out all the time. I will always be your biggest hype man, your biggest cheerleader. But I just felt like it was a bit much for somebody else's wedding. Just my opinion. If she just tried half as hard, she'd be perfect. But Caroline, on the flip side... Your dress did not give what the girl said is supposed to have gave in the words of Rolling Ray. For $12,000, you should have ate everybody up. That dress just didn't give a whole lot. But next time, do better so that Chanel won't eat you up so severely. So, child, now we see Caroline Brooks and her two friends show up. Caroline is in a pissy mood. She's angry at Nina because she thinks that Nina was messy for telling Sarah what she told her when she called her up. So baby, we see Caroline Brooks pull Nina to the side. She's like, Nina, can we talk? Cause I need to address some things with you. So they sit down and Caroline Brooks goes right into it. She's like, Nina, when I called you up the other day, I thought that you were a safe space. I am so hurt right now that she went and told Sarah what I said. So Nina says, okay, hold on, calm down. I only told Sarah that you were hurt, which you were. That's all I said. I wasn't being messy. I wasn't being a backstabber. Like, I don't understand what the issue is. So Caroline blames Nina for the fact that Sarah snapped at her in the group text. And she's like, I'm just so hurt by you, Nina. Like, Sarah came for my jugular. And the reason why she did that was because of you. So now Brooks keeps raising her voice and she's like, I trusted you, Nina. I trusted you. So Nina's like, look, I am dealing with so much right now regarding my father. I don't have time for this. Like, you're not going to sit here and scream at me. Like, I just cannot deal with this right now. So Brooks says, I know you're going through a lot, Nina, but that's not the point right now. The point is you hurt me. So at this point, Nina says, shout out to everybody. I have fun. I'm not going to sit up here and do this with you. <laughs> oh! Shout out to everybody. They I have fun. Good I got to be good. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have done the same thing. First of all, you can tell that Nina is not a confrontational person. She seems very sweet, very soft-spoken, very much a peacemaker. She was not trying to start any mess between you and Sarah. Now, as a friend, if you're in a friend group and two friends fall out, you already know that you guys are talking about it with each other. And also, Caroline, you already know that Nina and Sarah are tight, so why are you so surprised and upset at the fact that they would discuss what happened at your dinner? And I definitely felt Nina's pain. I have a soft spot when I hear that somebody's parent is sick. 
okay? Because as you guys know, if you've been watching me for quite some time, then you know that last year, my father got cancer unexpectedly, I might add. He was so healthy. He looked great. He worked out. I mean, just an amazing man. And seven months later, passed away. And when I tell you, came out of nowhere. So I would have been livid had somebody brought some craziness to me while I was dealing with all that. So now Nina walks away and she walks over to Lisa, Ayan, and Sarah, and she tells them what just happened between her and Brooks. She's emotional at this point. She's like, I can't deal with this. I'm dealing with so much right now in my family. I just can't take her. She's screaming at me about Sarah. Like, I can't do this. So as the party's going on, we see Caroline and Sergio walking around, taking pics with all their friends and family. And at one point, Caroline starts talking to her interior designer and she's thanking her for making Dubai feel like a home for her. And she actually starts crying. I was like, I can assume that Caroline has probably only cried maybe three times in her life, if that. Even Sergio was shocked. He was like, wait, you're crying over our interior designer, but you've never cried in front of me one time. I just want to know, how are you able to bottle your emotions up like that? I am a crier. I am like Nina and I'm like Candace off of Potomac. When I am sad, upset, I am crying and I feel so much better after <laughs> because crying is healthy. It's a release. So I'm just like, look, I will pencil in a good cry. So now we flip back to the rest of the women and Caroline Brooks walks over to them and she and Sarah go off to the side to discuss this whole beef between them. Now keep in mind, Caroline Brooks has had a few drinks, so she's pretty lit right now. So they sit down to talk and Caroline Brooks says, look, I am hurt by what you said. I felt like you judged me as a mother and I did not appreciate that. So Sarah says, well, what exactly did I say because I never was trying to judge you as a mom. So Brooke says, well, you told me that I need to be more affectionate. And Sarah says, I did not say that. I said that you need to be closer. Then she goes on to say how Brooke said to them at dinner that her mom was not affectionate to her when she was younger. So Brooke says, no, I never said my mom didn't show me affection. I just said that I wanted more of it. So now Brooks brings up how Sarah said something about generational curses and Sarah says, no, I did not say that. I said generational cycles. So Caroline Brooks says, okay, well, it's the same shit. Like, whatever. You said it. I didn't like it. So this conversation is getting heated. And Brooks goes on to say that Sarah's comments were pretty much an attack on her culture. Because remember that she's Caribbean and Afro-Latina. Now, was it just me or did it seem like when she started talking about culture, that she was kind of putting on this weird accent. Was I hearing things or did you guys catch it too? But I caught it and I was like, Brooks, why are you putting on this accent? Why? You don't have to do this. Just be yourself, sis. <laughs> so when I tell you that Sarah surprised me, she tells Brooks, girl, stop screaming. Take that bass out your voice. You're doing too much. You're at a 20. I need you at a six. And she lets Brooks know if she keeps screaming at her, she's going to walk away. Then she says, Caroline, I dare you to drop this act and let the real Caroline shine through. So now Brooks is really pissed and she says, excuse me, are you threatening me? I said, no, Caroline, stop it. You know good and well she's not threatening you. So now Brooks starts screaming again about she wants Sarah to drop the act and show who she really is. And she also says that Sarah's not perfect either. Then she starts screaming, what the F is this to Sarah? And we hear a producer in the background saying, whoa, whoa, like stop it. Because we know in Dubai, if you start screaming and carrying on and cursing in public, you can go to jail. So they were letting her know like, sis, this ain't what you want. You are not in the States, you are in Dubai. So stop all that screaming and all that cursing because you will be in jail. But y'all, that's where the episode ends. 
I thoroughly enjoyed it. Definitely one of the best episodes of the season. And Caroline Brooks, I need you to talk to people like you have some sense. I'm serious. I understand that you feel a type of way, but all that screaming and cursing at people, especially the people like Sarah and Nina, where they're so calm, there's no need for all that. I know we only have, I think, two more episodes left. I'm excited for this reunion. I think it's going to give us something. But again, this was a great episode of Dubai. Thank you guys so much for watching my recap. I hope you all enjoyed. And as always, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you all later. Bye.